transformative, disruptive, elegant. Many words can be used to describe the next vehicle to enter Tesla's vehicle lineup. One thing is certain, this vehicle has the potential to radically transform and reimagine how people think of and experience transportation and the world around us. This video is a deep dive on Tesla's Cybercab, where I will summarize everything that is publicly known about the vehicle and explain why I think this product may become the most disruptive new vehicle launch since the Ford Model T. What do we know about it? When is it coming? What makes this vehicle so special? How will it impact Tesla's income statement? Let's dive right in. First introduced on October 10th, 2024, at the Wii Robot event in California, the Cybercab is a two-door compact vehicle designed and optimized for autonomous driving. Cybercab is an integral part of Elon's long-standing vision to democratize transportation and transform our society. And according to Tesla's latest guidance, production starts in April 2026. There are three fundamental requirements to achieve this vision. The first, and the most difficult to achieve, is that the software actually needs to be safe enough to allow the vehicle to drive autonomously. The robotaxi business model must also be low cost and very competitive with other forms of transportation. As we will discuss later, Tesla is being very ambitious here, and this will have profound implications. And finally, the convenience and overall experience with robotaxi must be equal to or better than existing alternatives. Let's cover each one separately, starting with Tesla's full self-driving software, or FSD for short. Tesla FSD is an advanced driving assisting software that, when activated, enables the vehicle to handle navigation, steering, lane changes, traffic lights, stop signs, intersections, and parking on city streets and highways. While the current iteration of the software is very impressive, it still requires oversight from the driver, who must be ready to intervene at any given moment. Tesla has been selling FSD since October 2016, almost 10 years. Now, it is easy to dismiss Elon Musk's claims that Tesla's FSD is close to achieving autonomous driving capabilities because he has been making the same promise for almost a decade. I have been pretty dismissive of this myself over the past few years covering Tesla. There have been many challenges and roadblocks along the way. However, there is an increasing amount of evidence that has emerged over the past 6-12 to 12 months to suggest that Tesla may finally be closing in on this once thought impossible milestone. Let's review the evidence now. Tesla is currently operating a small Model Y robotaxi fleet in Austin, Texas as of June 2025. There are approximately 30 vehicles in the fleet, and Elon has recently stated on X that this fleet is expected to roughly double before the end of 2025. It should be noted, for full transparency, that while these robotaxis are operating completely autonomously, the vehicles must have a safety driver in the front seat in case of emergency. Austin was the first US city to allow Tesla to operate a robotaxi network, followed shortly by San Francisco, California. Tesla will soon begin operations in Phoenix, Arizona, with plans to expand to 8 to 12 more metropolitan areas in the near future. But beside these regional pockets of robotaxi commercial operations, there is a lot of new empirical data that suggests that Tesla's latest software, version 14, is a paradigm shift in performance over the previous version. For example, this improvement can be visualized when comparing the crowdsourced, user-submitted FSD data from V13 to V14 on the FSD community tracker. Here, we see that city miles to critical disengagement increased from 229 miles with V13 to over 1,614 miles with V14. A critical disengagement in this case is defined as a manual intervention to avoid a perceived safety issue, such as avoiding an accident, driving through a red light or stop sign, driving on the wrong side of the road, etc. Another useful dashboard to evaluate the progress of Tesla's FSD is provided by X user EdgeCase411. This is a community-maintained, personal FSD progress tracker survey dashboard showing how Tesla owners rate the real-world performance of full self-driving over time. It tracks around 30 to 40 specific driving scenarios, like smooth turns, lane changes, handling roundabouts, reacting to school buses, avoiding potholes, etc. on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being never successful and 10 being perfect, with color coding from red, meaning poor, to green and blue, meaning excellent. 
The columns represent survey results at different dates from early 2023 to November 2025, clearly illustrating a steady improvement in most areas, with the weighted average score rising from 3.6 to 8.2 over the years. There are also many individual Tesla owners that are sharing their own personal stories of letting FSD safely drive them for hundreds or even thousands of miles without intervention through all sorts of different geographies and road conditions. When evaluating FSD data, it's also important to keep in mind that Tesla literally never stops iterating. As good as V14 is today, Tesla will keep improving it, probably in perpetuity, and so this will only get better from here. It does seem very likely at this point, in my opinion, that Tesla has solved autonomous driving, or is at least very close. It has taken much longer than anyone expected, but I think we can finally see the destination on the horizon. Now that we've covered FSD, let's cover our second fundamental requirement, cost. Assuming FSD becomes fully capable of autonomous driving, the other key part of the equation is the cost of the vehicle, and this is where CyberCab will truly shine. Tesla's objective for this vehicle is to be able to manufacture it for as little as possible, while simultaneously ensuring it is highly functional as an autonomous robotaxi. Manufacturing cost will directly contribute to its success as a robotaxi, since the cheaper that Tesla can build it for, the lower they can afford to charge the customer per mile, and the more disruptive this product will become in the market. Before we review some numbers, let's review why and how CyberCab will be Tesla's lowest cost vehicle by far starting with looking at the production method. CyberCab will be the first vehicle that Tesla builds using its innovative and industry-first unboxed manufacturing process. Tesla first outlined the principles of the unboxed manufacturing process on March 1st, 2023, during Tesla's Investor Day event. Unlike conventional vehicle manufacturing, where a vehicle's frame is built first and then robots and humans stuff components into it sequentially along a moving assembly line, the unbox method assembles major sections of the vehicle in parallel on separate sub-assembly lines, each allowing more robots and workers to access parts openly without space constraints. These completed modules are then joined in a final assembly stage. Tesla's unbox manufacturing process offers several key advantages over traditional linear assembly lines. Since the factory is not constrained by a linear assembly line, it can make better use of space. This cuts the factory floor space requirements down by 40%, enabling new factories to be built more quickly and for lower cost. And since the overall footprint is smaller, this also means lower associated overhead costs per unit of production built in that factory. Another big advantage of the unboxed manufacturing method is that it enables faster production rates. Parallel sub-assembly lines allow more robots and workers to operate simultaneously without bottlenecks. A faster production rate means Tesla can achieve a much higher overall production capacity, which again means lower per unit cost of production. The unbox method will also improve quality and precision. In traditional vehicle manufacturing, many components such as wiring and seats must be installed into tight, confined spaces inside the completed body shell, which is ergonomically challenging and can lead to imperfect fits, pinched wires, or loose connections. With Unboxed, major sections of the vehicle are built openly on dedicated parallel lines, where robots and workers have full 360-degree access, allowing more accurate placement and fastening. When assembling large modules separately and then joining them precisely, overall dimensional accuracy improves because each sub-assembly can be built and inspected to tighter tolerances independently, rather than compounding small errors along a long sequential line. Sub-assemblies can also be fully tested electrically, mechanically, and functionally before final integration, catching defects earlier in the process instead of at the end of the line when fixes are more expensive and disruptive. Now that I have covered why the production method is optimal to reduce cost as much as possible, what about the product itself? Tesla put a lot of thought into the design of CyberCab, and many design choices were made to minimize the cost profile of the product starting with the vehicle's shape. Tesla has not yet confirmed this, but this vehicle is surely extremely aerodynamic. This is important because its aerodynamic profile will play a big role at determining its overall efficiency. A higher efficiency means that they can afford to use a smaller battery and still achieve a respectable range. The vehicle is also small, lightweight, 
with only two seats and no glass roof, also supporting a smaller battery. Since the battery is the most expensive part of an EV, this directly lowers the vehicle's overall production cost. One other important note on the battery. Tesla said they plan to use 4680 structural battery packs in CyberCab. Fortunately, President Trump's changes to the Inflation Reduction Act have not affected the battery manufacturing tax credit, which means Tesla's in-house battery packs will benefit from a $45 per kilowatt hour credit directly from the US federal government. Unlike the 2170 cell battery packs made in Gigafactory Nevada, Tesla won't need to share these tax credits with Panasonic since the 4680 cells and battery packs are made by Tesla alone in Gigafactory, Texas. There is increasing evidence that the CyberCab will use two or three different large Giga castings to form the frame of the vehicle's body, with ex-user Joe Tegmeyer posting several pictures of castings at Gigafactory, Texas, taken by his drone. These large castings replace hundreds of smaller stamped or welded parts, reducing production complexity and cost. And finally, CyberCab will use polyurethane plastic body panels with color injected directly during the molding process, eliminating the need for traditional paint shop. This makes the panels more resilient to scratches and contributes to lower overall production costs. The last fundamental requirement that Tesla needs to deliver on to succeed with CyberCab is convenience. If the robotaxi network is economical but unavailable, or if pickup times are too long, it will not be successful, especially when you can get an Uber in 5 minutes or less. Fortunately, everything that I have just explained, from the unboxed manufacturing method to the purposeful design choices made to drive down cost, also indirectly affect Tesla's ability to make a CyberCab robotaxi network very convenient. And why is that? Because Tesla will be able to mass produce CyberCab and scale the network very quickly and very aggressively at a pace that no other company or ride hailing service can match. Elon has recently stated that the unboxed production method can theoretically achieve a production rate of one vehicle every five seconds. Let's assume he is off by a factor of three and they instead achieve one vehicle every 15 seconds. This would still yield a theoretical production capacity of over 2 million vehicles per year. Tesla has also been proactively thinking about potential bottlenecks in the operations and planned accordingly. For example, Tesla has designed a cleaning robot that has the ability to retrieve lost or forgotten items and to clean the vehicle completely autonomously. CyberCab will also feature wireless inductive charging, a first for Tesla vehicles, which does not require a human to plug and unplug a charging cable. Not to mention, the butterfly wing doors and the beautiful 21-inch display will make the experience of using CyberCab very cool for the consumer. If Tesla can solve the first two fundamental requirements, meaning FSD performance and cost, this third one is basically a walk in the park. Given the effort made on both the production side and the product side, what will it cost Tesla to build a CyberCab? Tesla's target for CyberCab's manufacturing cost is under $20,000 per unit at scale as stated by Elon Musk during the 2024 RoboTaxi event and on subsequent earnings calls. Let's use Model 3 as a benchmark and work our way backwards to estimate the CyberCab production cost. I estimate that it currently costs Tesla approximately $35,000 to build a Model 3 premium rear-wheel drive in the US. Model 3 uses a 75 kWh battery, while CyberCab's battery will probably be between 45 and 50 kWh. I will use 45 kilowatt hours for my calculations. It will also use a 4680 structural battery pack instead of CATL LFP prismatic cells. Let's assume that the more inexpensive LFP cells from China used in the Model 3 premium rear wheel drive cost about the same as the in house 4680 battery packs, inclusive of the $45 per kilowatt hour IRA credit. Given that CyberCab's battery is 30 kilowatt hours smaller than the Model 3, that is a savings of $3,000. Next, the production line. While Model 3 is probably being built on production equipment that is fully depreciated by now, which helps lower production costs, it is still a complex and traditional manufacturing process that is very labor intensive with no use of giga castings or other modern manufacturing techniques that Tesla has incorporated in some of its other vehicles. 
Tesla builds approximately 200,000 Model 3s annually in Fremont. Through CyberCab's unbox manufacturing process, Tesla has said that they can build at a rate that supports a 2 million vehicle per year capacity, or 10 times the current Model 3 production capacity. And this surely won't come at a cost of 10 times the number of workers. So there will be significant labor cost savings. Let's assume that labor contributes 20% of Model 3's production cost, or $7,000, and that CyberCab at 10x the scale and with an unboxed manufacturing process will drive savings of 50% less labor. That's a savings of $3,500. The CyberCab's variable costs will also be significantly less expensive than the Model 3's, given the much larger scale, fewer internal components, extensive use of GigaCast, and lack of paint. Assuming that variable product costs and paint combine to account for 50% of Model 3's costs, and that CyberCab can reduce these costs by only 25%, that is another approximately $4,500 in savings per vehicle. Assuming another $1,000 in savings for reduced per unit overhead costs, I estimate that CyberCab will cost Tesla around $23,000 at scale to build, which is very close to Elon's estimate. At a cost of $23,000, Tesla only needs to sell the CyberCab for around $29,000 to generate a 20% gross margin. But a CyberCab is not really functional without FSD. Tesla will probably offer a bundled price that includes FSD to justify going higher than $29,000. If we add the current $8,000 price for FSD on top of this, price climbs to $37,000 for an impressive 38% gross margin. It is possible that price is even higher than this, however, since FSD has been priced as high as $15,000 US in the past. Either way, this product has the opportunity to meaningfully drive massive incremental volume, revenue, and profitability for Tesla. While Tesla has said it will sell CyberCab directly to individuals, they will also manage their own fleet of robotaxis. And unlike the consumer, who will probably spend between $37,000 and $50,000 to buy a CyberCab, Tesla's cost to acquire the product is simply their production cost, which I estimated to be around $23,000. At this low cost, I estimate Tesla CyberCab's robotaxi operating cost at only $1 per mile. Elon has publicly stated that he thinks that in the long run, CyberCab can operate for as little as $0.20 cents per mile, but let's assume it starts off at $1 per mile, per my estimates. This means that Tesla can effectively offer a CyberCab robotaxi service for as little as $1.25 per mile and still generate a 25% gross profit on every dollar of revenue. To put this number in context, ride-sharing services such as Uber and Lyft charge an estimated $2.50 per mile. At $1.25 per mile, Tesla's CyberCab would essentially cut the legs right out from under these services. The US taxi and ride-share market alone generates $80 billion in annual revenue. If Tesla's service is half the price and more convenient than its competitors, there's no reason to believe that Tesla cannot achieve a dominant share of this market in the future. And what about individual vehicle ownership? Based on the latest data from the American Automobile Association's Your Driving Cost study, the average total cost to operate a new vehicle in the US market is about $12,000 per year, assuming 15,000 miles driven per year. Doing some quick math, this comes to approximately 80 cents per mile. Therefore, I estimate that it'll be more difficult to displace individual vehicle ownership, at least at first. But if Tesla gets anywhere close to their 20 cents per mile target, it will become very difficult for someone to justify owning their own vehicle from a financial and a convenience perspective. I mean, imagine never needing to worry about parking or putting fuel or paying for repairs or maintenance like ever again and instead just being chauffeured everywhere you want to go in a beautiful, comfortable, private robotaxi? Most people would surely opt out of vehicle ownership in this case. What would you do? Let me know in the comments.